Hey everybody, welcome to Reading the Bible to Cats, and Henry is busy making biscuits. I guess he's going to settle in. Henry, are you making biscuits? Did you just give me a single wink? He's purring. Um, well, he's a little restless though. Oh no. Hopefully he'll settle down. Yeah. But maybe not. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's settling down. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Let's read the Bible as Henry gets situated. I guess he's going to do a little grooming. Okay, well, we're on um, 1 Corinthians 14. I'll just jump in. And, and, you know, 1 Corinthians 13 was the love chapter. So, you know, the famous love chapter. So we're going to keep reading. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to pe people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves. But the one who prophesies edifies the church. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets so that the church may be edified. Now, brothers and sisters, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be to you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or, or word, a word of instruction, even in the case of lifeless things that make sounds? such as the pipe or harp, how will anyone know what tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes? Again, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? So it is with you. Unless you speak intelligible words with your tongue, how will anyone know what you are saying? You will just be speaking into the air. Undoubtedly, there are all sorts of languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning, if then I do not grasp the meaning of what someone is saying, I'm a, I am a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker is a foreigner to me. So it is with you. Since you are eager for gifts of the Spirit, try to excel in those that build up the church. For this reason, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that they may interpret what they say, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. Otherwise, when you are praising God in the spirit, how can someone else who is now put in the position of an inquirer say amen to your thanksgiving since they do not know what you are saying? You are giving thanks well enough, but no one else is edified. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you, but in the church I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers and sisters, stop thinking like children. In regard to evil, be infants, but in your thinking, be adults. In the law, it is written with other tongues, and through the lips of foreigners I will speak to this people, but even then they will not listen to me, says the Lord. Tongues then are a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is not for unbelievers, but for believers. So, if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues, and inquirers or unbelievers come in, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if an unbeliever or an inquirer comes in while everyone is prophesying, they are convicted of sin and are brought under judgment by all. 
as the secrets of their hearts are laid bare, so they will fall down and worship God, exclaiming, God is really among you. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters? When you come together, each of you has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. If it, anyone speaks in a tongue, two or at the most three should interpret. If there is no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to God. Two or three prophets should speak and the others should weigh carefully what is said. And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. For you can all prophesy in turn so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. The spirits of prophets are subject to the control of prophets, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. Women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. If they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home, for it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. Or did the word of God originate with you, or are you the only people it has reached? If anyone thinks they are a prophet or otherwise gifted by the Spirit, let them acknowledge that what I'm writing to you is the Lord's command. But if anyone ignores this, they will themselves be ignored. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. Okay, everyone, that's the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And it just sounds like at Corinth there was a lot of, like, disorder, and I don't know, maybe boasting, you know, in the gifts, certain gifts, like the gift of tongues, but... I get the impression they just kind of got carried away and there was just a lot of cacophony, <laughs> like a lot of speaking out of turn and tongue speaking all at the same time. And um, and so he's like counseling for or order in the church. And then It's interesting, in verse 34, you know, that whole passage about women should remain silent in the church. But then in verse 39, he says, he's addressing both the men and the women, because he says, therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues. But everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. So it's like he says that above, but then he's like, including the women, in, you know, prophesying and speaking in tongues. I, I don't know. I guess my take is that there was just a lot of chaos in that church. Um, and it was just everything was out of order. And um, he's just trying to bring them in line. Um, I don't know. It just sounds like there was a lot of gabbing going on <laughs> i don't know I'm, yeah because we know that when he says women should remain silent in the churches you know there there were women teachers like um uh, oh gosh why am i forgetting their names priscilla and, Aqu and aquila um they were a couple and they, you know, Priscilla helped to teach Apollos, who was, who was apparently a really good teacher at the time, but kind of had some error in his teaching. And Priscilla had a part in, in teaching him, you know, the correct doctrine. So I think everything, you know, you take the whole counsel of the Word of God. And then, of course, in the Old Testament, you do have women prophetesses and even in the new testament and paul certainly brings up his co-laborers and other chapters who happen to be women but um i don't know you know i think there's a certain order and this church was out of order um but 
search it out for yourself. But anyway, it, the, the wonderful thing, the way he starts out is follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. See, in, in chapter 13, he was really emphasizing, emphasizing um, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love because it seems like they were kind of caught up in the gifts of the Spirit. You know, and all the accoutrement of, of the Spirit and not the fruit of the Spirit. You know, love, joy, peace. Um, so he's just you know, counseling them to follow the way of love and to eagerly desire that primarily, but, you know, also the gifts of the Spirit. Anyway. Oh, look, who joined us? Were you listening this whole time, Guster? Guster, what do you think about the gift of tongues. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I know you have your own language. Esther, you do you want to say anything? No? Okay. All right. Well, let's say a prayer. <laughs> That's cute. I don't know if I can't get them both in the shot. Oh, there we go. Oh, how cute. Okay, well, I'll say a prayer. Lord, I do ask for discernment and wisdom because I'm a woman. <laughs> and I know I have things to say, but don't know exactly the, you know, exactly what Paul's getting at when he tells us to be silent in the churches. Um, pray for w wisdom um, and understanding. But we also know that, um, you know, Judaism and Christianity, you know, your, your word and your truth that has brought deep meaning and freedom for women um, like no other religion. I mean, Jesus elevated the place of women. And we know that Paul later says there's neither male nor female in Christ and you know, and then John later says in Revelation that we are all kings and priests. And, um, but it, it, yeah, so thank you for th that freedom. Um, but help, help us understand your word and help us to eagerly seek love in all things and to understand the gifts of the Spirit and your Spirit. Thank you for your word. I pray for everyone who's listening that they would feel your freedom and your love. Because where your spirit is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of Christ is, there is freedom. And we thank you for the new covenant and for being a part of the new covenant. And for the Messiah, for salvation, for eternal life. And, and truly for freedom. Uh, pray for the world, Lord, um, and we pray that you return soon. I feel always called to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for the peace of Israel, for your land, your promised land, and for your chosen people, that you would comfort and strengthen them and they would see the face of the Messiah. And we pray also for the suffering people in Gaza that you would, again, just, I always say this, but just show up for them. We know that the only way to peace is through Jesus, through Yeshua, the Messiah, the only way. 
because in, in him there is love and there is peace between people when you're truly when we're truly in him so I, I lift all these things up to you and pray all this in Jesus' name Amen Amen Gesture Gesture were you praying along with me <laughs> it's turning away okay everybody well we will, um, I will get back with you on the morrow. Right, Guster and Henny, sleepy kitties. Hey, I hope everyone's doing well. Oh, and thank you for all your comments. I really love them. All right, bye.